Chris Dunganier, founder of the Conscious Education Podcast. This is a live session filmed in our Magnetic Mind Masterclass, which is a coaching program. If you hear me uh, referring to some of the guests or talking to people, this was recorded when it was live. And so you're not able to uh, comment or chat uh, to me, obviously. Enjoy this session and uh, do subscribe or share it if you think it's valuable. Bye for now. So let's get into today. I've got a really solid theme that I want to cover today about living uh, a super conscious uh, life, which is uh, it's a really great thing to think about. And uh, Herod and I were going for our walk this morning and we were talking about how there's certain principles or certain concepts. And I covered a few of them last week. And these mental models or uh, uh, concepts are, are, are so easy to, to share, but, but living them makes such a big difference, you know, once it, very simple things. And, uh, you know, like I covered last week and like I'll cover today, it, it doesn't necessarily matter how wide you go with principles. It's a lot of time about the depth. Uh, the depth of the principle and understanding it, you know, like, for example, the idea of structure that creates the path of least resistance, that is something you can simply sit with for probably years uh, and, and really grasp. So it's, it's very, very cool. So that the principle or the idea for today is to understand that your consciousness isn't just uh, one dimensional. There, there's many dimensions and one of those dimensions uh, we've decided to label the super conscious and to be able to to talk about that so it's it's, it's going to be a great session so I want to jump right into it I know there's a lot of people that are still coming in and everything else but uh, but it's it's very very good so let's jump right in so I want to start off by saying there are three different ways that you can orient uh, to your life and uh, and that's why I'm wearing this t-shirt because uh, you, you can live in either of them, but only one is, is going to be able to give you a, a flowing, fulfilled life to take you to where it is you want to go. The other two will create some sort of dysfunction. Uh, and that's very exciting. So, so I want to start off by addressing and, and letting you know that uh, you can call these three different levels or three different layers of mind, whatever you want. You know, uh, Jung, uh, Carl Jung, very famous, uh, famous famous man and uh, and he would he wouldn't call it superconscious he would call it the collective unconscious you know he would use the word subconscious and maybe the id for what we're describing and others might use the word ego for what we call self-conscious and so it doesn't matter if you want to use the word subconscious unconscious superconscious higher self what matters is that it is not the um, not the word but what, but what that word represents inside this thing that uh, we're trying to understand, which is uh, what we are, what this creative energy is that's inhabiting this body and what we're here to do. So, so it doesn't really matter, but we'll use the same words uh, today and in this work so that we can all have a, a way to communicate about these different levels of consciousness. And uh, so let's get into it and let's have some fun. Uh, so, so welcome. So that's my, my goal today is to really have you understand the premise that orienting yourself from the superconscious perspective is always available. Uh, it allows a very different outcome, and uh, it, it's where you want to get to. So to do that, let's understand the, the bottom uh, layer. So the bottom layer here is the self-conscious. And the self-conscious uh, is, is really well drawn um, by this diagram. And, and you know this diagram comes from Simone Wright, who uh, I believe is an absolutely amazing uh, intuitive and teacher. And you guys should definitely uh, check her out. So, so the self-conscious here, uh, designed, uh, shown um, visually by a uh, polarity, uh, a black and, and a white side or a dark and a light side. See, the self-conscious always sees a good and a bad, okay? The self-conscious has things that it says, this is what I want it to be like, and this is what I don't want. It sees two sides of things. It sees duality. And this is very important because the self-conscious is needed for, uh, that's right, Jerry, thanks. Uh, that, that's needed uh, for, for us to be able to have an experience. So I want everyone to get this. 
the, there's a book and it's by a really great author, but I really don't like the title of the book. And the book says, the ego is the enemy. And uh, great author, Ryan Holiday, brilliant author, love it. I just don't love the title because without having this self-consciousness or without having this ego, without being able to, to experience good and bad, we would experience nothing. Does that make sense? If you can't experience hot, uh, you can't experience cold, okay? Is uh, you, you, must, you must realize that polarity is needed to experience. And it, it, re it really sucks, hey? Uh, it really sucks. We have to be able to experience death to be able to experience life. We have to be able to experience uh, sadness in order to experience whatever the opposite of sadness is, joy, happiness, fulfillment, love. And, and so it's very important to understand that this isn't a problem. This is needed because in the self-conscious, things are limited. Okay, In this worldview, there's a polarity. Now, the problem with trying to create uh, down here is whenever you create, it's like there's a pendulum trying to swing. And, and as we know, uh, a pendulum, whenever you push it one way, always pushes back. Okay. So, so how many of you have found yourself trying to create something and you say, it'd be really great to be rich. It'd be really great to have this sort of body. That would be good. See, whenever you decide something is good, you're also deciding that something is bad. And so as you push yourself towards it, there seems to always be a force. So give me a yes in the chat box if this is true. There always seems to be a force trying to push you back the other way, isn't it? And, and we see this everywhere. You know, if you have a, a cold ice cream, what does it want to do? It wants to get hot. It wants to melt. If you have, a, so if you have something cold, it wants to get hot. If you have hot soup, it cools. You see that? So the pendulum always swings and always wants to return back to its balance point. Does that make sense? It always returns back to its balance point. You know, if you swing something, eventually it ends up in the middle. Is that true? Everyone knows that. So the more you try to say it's going to be good to be rich, good to be rich, good to be rich, the more there's a force coming back and you end up in the middle. And many people try to create from this worldview of polarity. Okay. However, whenever you do, as much as you push and try, you always end up at the same place. And it's, uh, it can become very frustrating. And people, they can take it personal. So, so the self-conscious isn't where we want to orient from. Okay, The self-conscious is always trying to solve problems. The self-conscious sees itself as a, as a problem that needs to be fixed and life as a, as a puzzle that needs to be solved. The self-conscious looks at what's not there and tries to make it better. It's always trying to complete itself. It says, here's where, I, here's where something is wrong and I'm going to fix it. If I just had more money, then I would be happy. If I just was five kilos lighter, if I just had the right partner, if I just, if I just, you see, if the world was just this, is that true? It's always saying that. And because of that, it's always trying to get away and then falls back. The, the self-conscious is never just happy and satisfied in the now. Its whole focus is how do I make this better? How do I improve it? What's not right? Is this true? So we don't want to orient from the self-conscious. How do you know you're oriented in the self-conscious? You're focused about what's not right rather than a different focus, which we'll talk about. You're focused about what you want to complete or improve. So the next level here uh, is the unconscious, okay? Now you can call this subconscious if you like. I had to pick one or the other, uh, but, but uh, and I chose unconscious because uh, both, of, both of my teachers use that word, yeah. So, so unconscious. Now, unconscious is, is here, shown with a circle and a cross in it, because the unconscious is always looking for balance or harmony. The unconscious is always looking for balance or harmony. So what is the unconscious? The unconscious is the automatic processing systems that were put in place before your self-conscious came online, okay? So the self-conscious doesn't really start until about age four. By age seven, it is taken over. 
it has taken over the uh, the show and is running it. But pre-verbal, pre-age four, in the womb, the infinite intelligence and in uh, that's creating the unconscious in you is there. Now, here's what's key about the unconscious. Okay, the unconscious is trainable. The unconscious is trainable. What this means is the unconscious comes into this world and learns things. It learns how to speak, and then you don't have to cognitively think about it. It learns how to walk. It also learns how to find safety in this crazy world we're in. Okay. It learns how to survive the parents you had and the upbringing that you had. It learns how to be safe. Okay, so the unconscious is very interesting, where the self conscious is always looking for good and trying to get away from bad. The, the unconscious is actually just trying to keep things the same. The unconscious just wants to stay alive. And what the unconscious says is if we've already survived that, if we've already survived that, then then that is what is uh, is the best bet to keep keep us alive. You see, Tanya's asked a good question, says, what if you rem don't remember much at that age? Yeah, you won't remember much uh, in the way that you like to remember because you like to remember self-consciously with pictures and thoughts and ideas and thinking. The unconscious is all in your body. That, does that make sense? It's all, it's all there. And the, the unconscious is, is programmable. This is how you learn to drive a car. You don't have to think about it anymore. Okay, so this is more thinking. This is feeling. Does that make sense, everyone? So the unconscious has a balance point. Now, typically, this balance point shows you exactly what is safe in your life. Okay, so, so usually there'll be a safe amount of love you're allowed in your life. There'll be a safe amount of abundance or money. There'll be a safe amount of, uh, of, of what it is that you're able to do. You'll be able to say it, it, there's, a safe, there's a safe place. And this balance point is based on your past. If you look at what you have in your life, that is a direct mirror of what your unconscious believes is safe and right. If you get too much of it, you, 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 you get, get away. But if you, so let's use money as an example. If you have too much of it, people start to freak out. What am I going to do with it? They start spending like crazy on things that they don't care about. But if they get under that balance point, they also bring it up. You see, most people don't end up homeless or rich. They end up somewhere in the middle. Most people don't end up obese, okay, or, you know, a fitness model. They end up somewhere in the middle. Isn't it true? Like most people end up somewhere here in the middle, but it's all slightly different for all of us. Most people don't have a life that they're absolutely loving, jumping out of the bed going, I love life. But most people don't hate their life either. You see, they're never really at the edges. There's always this balance point. Now, what's interesting is as much as the self-conscious thinks it's in charge, this middle balance point is actually determined by what the unconscious believes is safe, both, both coming down from the superconscious and, uh, and emotionally. Do you see that? So that balance point, this is your results in life. You end up here. And so a lot of people make the assumption. They say, okay, so what we should do, Chris, we need to fix the unconscious. Now, here's the problem um, with, with, with that is you say unconscious, uh, I need to fix you. All that happens is the unconscious then takes on a belief that it's broken and that there's something wrong with it. You see, because it takes everything literally, it's programmable. And if you're trying to fix it, the, the only reason you would try to fix it if there's something wrong with it. This is literally why most people don't have the healing or the results in their life because they give instructions to their unconscious that they're broken. You see, the unconscious doesn't have a way to discern information. It just takes what it's given. It just gets given it and it, and it goes, that's the truth. That's what it is. It has nothing. See, it has no, no way of stopping what's coming in. So whatever you're given as a child and whatever you give your unconscious, it's just like a, you know, a fertile garden. Whatever you put in the garden will grow. It doesn't ask, is that a weed or is that, uh, you know, the plant you want? Whatever's put there, that's what it will grow, especially 
when you when you go at the unconscious and you say, I'm going to fix you. I'm going to fix you. It will just grow trees of, I need to be fixed. You see. So what's this next level then? The next level, you, you, you actually can't draw it, okay? It, it, it's so vast. This is the superconscious. Now, the superconscious doesn't reside in the feelings of the body and the programs of the body. The superconscious is the aspect of you that is outside of your programming. It's where intuition and ideas are held, okay? It's, it's this field of information that we're all connected to, you know? It's this field that somehow we can't understand, but most women know that if they're in an office with other women, their cycles start to, to match up. How does that happen? There's a field of information. We see birds flying together without anything other than a field instruction. We see fish swimming in schools of thought and they shift like this, you see. There's fields of information. There's information outside of us. It's why when inventions happen, they happen all over the world at the same time without people being able to talk. Okay, there is a larger field of information and there's many different fields. Maybe we would draw the superconscious field of information with many different fields that we can tap into. The first field might be your family field, the information of how your family is. Then there'll be obviously our, our species and our genes and there's fields. The fields don't just go out, they go in. When they look in at DNA, they find more and more of nothingness. In fact, <laughs> every single one of us has the exact same ability to turn on and turn off, to turn on and turn off. Uh, I know there's scientists here, you know, it's a complete metaphor, uh, dif different, uh, different gene structures. So the superconscious is, is this place of infinite intelligence that is sending first instructions down to down to the superconscious, you see, wherever this point of information originates from changes the balance point. So what we must learn to do is to let go of our limited viewpoint, okay? Let go of it and rise up and out to this expanded view. You see, we get out to that expanded view when we realize that we're so much more than just a body. Who's with me? We're so much more than just a body. I mean, what even are we? We all know we've watched ourselves. We've watched our bodies change. I mean, I look at photos and I go, well, that, that was me and that was me and that was me. But the body keeps changing. It keeps shifting. But what really am I? And I know that I'm something bigger and I'm connected to something much, much, much bigger. See, most of our challenges and our resistance comes from us orientating down here when we're oriented that we're limited, we're oriented that we're not powerful, we're oriented that there's something good and something bad. So here's the premise, okay? The premise is that at any moment, you can choose to orient from any single level. You can orient from this is good and this is bad and this is that, I need to, you can orient down here. Or, you can orient from unconscious, which is when you just, you just go off your feelings. And we've all felt ourselves shift from here to here. Okay, I'll give you an example. If you go to a scary movie, you know that you're sitting in a cinema. But at some point, your self-conscious gets over, overridden by the unconscious. Something jumps out and you jump in your seat. You see? That's, the, that's when you went from being self, the, the self-conscious knows you're sitting in a cinema. The unconscious doesn't know. It just gets information, goes, ah, and you can have that shift. You see that? So you can, you can live from the unconscious, a place of fear. You can live from emotion. You can live here or you can live from here. And my goal is for you to be able to learn to come up to this level, make changes, and then bring it back down into your human experience. Does that make sense? So it's a rising it's a shifting, it's coming back down and experiencing it. And the, the best way that I've got to describe how that works is self-conscious is like ice, right? It's like an ice cube.
right? It's just like ice cubes. Now, if you move up, ice will eventually turn to a cloud. First, you'll melt it to water, okay? Then water will turn up into the cloud. Now, what's interesting is if you try to have your life and try to shift around the ice cube, what's going to happen? It's going to melt. It's going to chip. It's going to, it's going to be very difficult to, to make anything happen when it's down there and it's solid. A big iceberg, these, they just don't move. What's easier, if you want to move that to somewhere else, if you want to become something different, if you want to orient from a different place, what's easier is it's the exact same, it's exactly the same to move it up to water to make it drops of the exact same information. This is what I want you to get. It's the same information. The ice, the water drops, and the cloud is the same thing, just a different frequency. It's the same thing, just a different frequency. Self-conscious, unconscious, superconscious. It's the same thing, just at a different frequency. That's all it is, meaning it's just a different way that those same chemical compounds are, are working together. They're at different temperatures. They're, they're, they're more spaced out. They're more solid. They are changing, but it's the same information. So when you realize that your self-conscious is the same information as your unconscious, and then you turn it into the cloud, any, any teacher ever said, your head's in the clouds. Well, I'm saying put your head in the clouds. When you rise up to here, then at this level, it's very easy for you to shift and change things. You can say, you know what? I don't want that bit there anymore. I'm going to shift that. And I'm going to have it like this. You see, I'm going to let that piece of the cloud that can drift away. That can, that can leave. So, so think about this. If you've ever looked up at clouds, who's seen clouds merge together, become one, drift apart, change, you see? You ever seen ice do that? Just suddenly, uh, to, you know, it doesn't work. It's, it's, it's solid, okay? Bang into each other. Maybe it stick together for a while. But it's much easier. So your job is to learn to rise up, shift it, change it, then Bring it back down into the form that you want. This is you, what you want. This is your desired reality. This is your current reality. And so your job isn't to try to go linear. Your job is to leave the old you behind, come up to this aspect of you, make the changes, and then bring it back down into the new orientation. Does that make sense? That's what we're here to do. You want to realize you can orient from a place of complete source code, complete connected to all, or you can orient to a place where you're limited. You can do either one because you it's the same you. It's the same you. So when we do the session, what we're doing is we're rising up and out. Or, and it's not up, it could be in. It's just, it's hard to explain. We're leaving our limited worldview and you have the power to do it in every single moment. You see, all of our frustration and our resistance comes from us orienting to the world at this bottom place. We must learn to leave it, realize what we really are, and then bring it down. Hey, Chris here again. I hope you really enjoyed that session. Obviously, it was streamed live to our Magnet Mind Masterclass uh, coaching program. If you'd like to be involved in that program, please do reach out. Uh, we do have spaces you can uh, apply for and you can join. So do let us know if it's something for you. And again, thank you so much for your support. Subscribe, like, and share this content so we can reach millions of people just like you and help them become conscious creators. Have a great day. Stay super conscious.